And now, a story. I seem to remember a time, and that weren't too long ago, you understand, that all my friends would treat me like a king. First thing in the morning, when I got up, I would get up and go out of my little one-bedroom apartment, the one that Frank had spent weeks helping me to find. And I turned to walk down to the bathroom, the same one that Heather insisted on cleaning for me every time she brought over cakes from her bakery for me to eat. <laughs> and as I opened the door, if I wasn't quite awake, I'd nearly trip over the small pile of notes, knickknacks, and presents that had been deposited by my dearest friend overnight. And this morning, as I examined the scraps of valentines and gifts, I sighed with inner contentment at the bounty of friendship left for me. And I wondered aloud, as I did every morning, whether I could be any happier. And I was gratified to hear, as I did every morning, the muffled giggle of some friend who had decided to wait downstairs to see if I was happy. <laughs> My duty done, I set a course straight for the washroom, where I found a bubble bath already steaming. I gently closed the door and slid my body into it. Suddenly, from down the hall, I heard a shriek of something that sounded like anger. Imagine my surprise a second later, when I actually heard a great fist punch the door and then begin banging the wood. I gave a silent thanks for locked doors. And even more vulgar than this, this huge voice began to shout. And me, barely awake, Hey, you fucking asshole, get the fuck out of my back. Well, I could barely answer. Who was this person? Yes, I said, in a voice clear enough for him to recognize and apologize. What is it? I said, get the fuck out of my back before I break down this fucking door. <laughs> well, I was stymied. <laughs> this was no friend. Who are you? I asked, stressing each syllable just in case they missed who I was the first time. Who the fuck are you? came his hasty reply. <laughs> well, I'm a friend, I said. Whose friend, he screamed. Why, well, I'm everybody's friend, I said a little defensively. There was a second of silence, and then the door seemed to lift off its hinges. And this man I'd never seen before stood before me. He was bigger than I was. He was bigger than most people. I thought he was finally ready to apologize. But instead, he reached into the bathtub and grabbed my arm and sent me hurtling across the tiles until my back lay against the radiator. My back started to burn, and I remember, I wanted to leave. <laughs> but the man, he wouldn't let me. He put his knee on my chest and began to yell even louder. You ever fucking do that again and I'll fucking kill ya. <laughs> he said, punctuating his speech with head flaps. I stood up. The suds from the bubble bath ran down my belly and dripped off my penis. <laughs> You've got a needle dick, he said spitefully. I didn't know how to answer. I spent the rest of that day in my room. And the next morning when I got up to go to work, there were no notes for me and my life had changed forever.